Yeah, I have all sorts of questions about that, but why don't we get to Keith instead? Let's talk a little Sixers and then see if he can talk a little trash. Keith Pompey, uh, you're an ultimate trash talker of football on social media accounts. Uh, (laughs) How are you doing after last night's game? (laughs) Um, Hey, I'm great, man. Uh, You know, yeah, here's the thing. They can continue to lose and hope the Jets win a couple, couple games and then they get an elite quarterback. See, Jeff doesn't want that. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want come, that. Come on, Keith. Do you I mean, really have any that. confidence that Dave Gettleman's going to pick the right person? I mean, he might go after get a, get a tight end who, you know, <laughs> who's a blocking tight end. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe he can that, get, but... a, a, you know, Evan Ingram's replacement since Evan Ingram can't catch a wide open ball. I know. That He's was crazy, out. wasn't it? I knew they lost yeah. and he dropped it. <laughs> We'll uh, get more football talk with you when we know you have more time. We know you're on a tight schedule. Always appreciate you hopping on. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not going to let him off that easily. Oh, you're not you letting him off. Never mind. Jeff's not No. Letting... All right. So so Keith Keith is a master of social media for people that don't know. And, and as, a, as a devout Giants fan, he has no problem trash talking his own team. So, so what was Keith's reaction to Danny Dimes? Uh, <laughs> turf monster tackle um <laughs> it was uh i think it was oh you know how like the emoji where people put their hands up like they have, have their shoulders like uh yeah. elevated and their arms up yeah like what the heck was that <laughs> yeah that's what it was my Danny my, fa- my, fa- mm-hmm. my favorite social media response was was from stefan diggs who described danny dimes as the character in every horror movie who's running away from the slow moving um killer and trips over nothing and then gets himself killed in mm-hmm. fairness to you both he ran faster than like tyree Hill did <laughs> he was like he was like 21.3 miles an hour so he just has to work on staying standing up he was like a cartoon character yeah, so they, we're moving he, looked like, his body. he looked like a, a olympic sprinter trying to reach the finish line you know how they lean forward <laughs> like he was like what are you doing dude keep running <laughs> It tried trying to reach the finish line about 10 yards too short. Uh, Keith, tell me what's going on in Sixers land here. Uh, we got a new coach. They're trying to put together a staff. We got changes in the front office. What do I need to know right now? No, you need to know that it's incomplete, <laughs> so to speak. Now, um, you know, here's the thing. Um, right now, they're trying to change over everything. You know, they're trying to get, uh, you know, Doc Rivers, they hired him. There's a guy, Roy Rogers, who's a, a big man coach that he's going after, who's a, a, a good guy, um, a good coach, rather. Um, I mean, you know, he's a great person as well. But Well, he also owns a lot that, of re- great restaurants. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that's the joke. That's the joke. And then they did make some adjustments to the front office, right? Now, my biggest problem is, like, you're making all these adjustments, but you still have the same roster, and you don't have a lot of cap space. So – you can make as many adjustments as you can, but if you can't get rid of these guys, it's going to be a problem. I mean, you can coach them up. You can do whatever you want. But if their pieces don't fit, you still have a problem. Okay. Well, you, we, the three of us have talked in the past about getting a staff together and what each member of the staff could possibly uh, do to benefit the players that we currently have. Assuming this, the players stay the same, how does Jorger fit into the Sixers? Um, I think like the defensive shortcomings that they had, I, I think that he could he could figure it out and 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 they could benefit from that. You know, you look at, I mean, if you look at when he was in Memphis, you know, he had Mark Gasol and he had Zach Randolph, and they were a pretty good tandem, right? Um, and defensively, you know, Mark Gasol had, you know, was a great defensive player, you know, in his system. So when I look at stuff like that, when when I look at stuff like that, um, I, I think that, you know, that, that will benefit the Sixers a lot just because of his defensive mindset. Yeah, we're good. Thank if, you so much. If we're looking at who they've added in the front office, are, are things going to change? They have Peter Dinwiddie here and they have, Prosper Karangwa uh, that they've added. Uh, they reassigned Alex Rucker. What's the makeup of the front office going to be going forward? 
you know, I, I think the makeup of the front office, you know, I think that Doc Rivers will probably be heavily involved. I mean, when you say, when you hear a head coach says that he and the GM are going to work together, I think the Doc, you know, the, the, the coach is going to be involved. I think um, Prosper, when he, and not Prosper, but Peter Dinwiddie, he comes with a track record in, as regards being a hard worker and putting things together. So I think he's going to be a guy behind the scenes, you know, making things happen, making them work. I think that, you know, Elton Brand is still going to be the contact. You know, I, I think it's, I know they hate to say this, but I, I can't see it not being collaborative. You know, I mean, just by the new faces that they have. And I think that Doc Rivers, you know, if you're a guy and you come in here and you're used to having power and the Sixers need you more than the, than you need the Sixers, I think that he's going to have a, a huge say in what goes on. You know, Keith, we have a, a decent amount of time, what, 30 days until the draft. Um, I'm not going to ask you yet who the Sixers are going to take because this draft is a mess. But if you had to pick one guy in this front office who's making the decision, or the guy that you would most count on to make the decision. Who in the front office now is the person that you think is leading the charge is who will make the pick for the Sixers if the Sixers make the I, pick? I mean, I think it's Doc Rivers. I mean, I think he'll be the guy that's going to do it. I think it's going to be him. You know, I mean, I know like Elton Brand is just the GM and everything, but I think that Doc is going to look at this, say, look at this roster, guys. I need some help. And when you look at some of the decisions that were made in the past, you know, people were questioning them. And I think that even if Doc doesn't have the final say, you know, he's going to um, at least have his um, – make his uh, opinion known, and they have to listen to him, you know. So what do you, what do you think Doc's direction is now for this team? If you're looking at the roster, obviously we'll have to see what, what moves can be made in terms of contracts. But in the draft, what type of player do you think they're looking for? Um, if it was me, right about now, um, now here's the thing about Doc. Like, you know, he, he really likes veteran players. But if it was me right about now, I need a I need a point guard who 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 can shoot or just go out there and get me a couple shooters. You know, I mean or a shooter. That's what they need. That's what they need the most. Now, if it was me also, don't be if it was me, I would try to see if if, if I can make a trade, which is probably going to be hard, but you probably, if you're in order to make a trade, you may have to get rid of that 21st pick. So, you know, I, I don't know if it's 100% definite that they will make that that move. But if you if you're saying like, what do they need? They need a shooter. They need a they they need a point guard. That's the big two biggest biggest needs that they need. Is it possible that Josh Richardson is the expendable t- piece on this team to try to get a shooter? You know, I, I don't know because, you know, when you look at Josh Richardson's salary, um, I mean, somebody may want to take him, but if I'm the Sixers, Josh is a guy that I would really like to keep. You know what I mean? Like, I, I get what you're saying, but, you know, Josh is making, what, $11 million? I mean, that's a bargain compared to what everyone else is making on that team, the other starters. You know, yeah, but, um, but isn't he a free agent at the end of the next season? Which would mean at that point they're not going to be able to afford signing him anyway. He is, but but at the same time, some teams when guys like that they don't they may not try to trade for him unless they really want because they know he's going to be a free agent. So if we're looking at it, what other roster moves are do you think are even possible? Are, are I, you hear these crazy like, oh, I throw a trade scenario in in the tracker, and Embiid's being sent to some place. Or instead, I mean, that doesn't seem realistic to me. If it's not Josh Richardson, who is the piece? Is it Al Horford? Like, what can this team do right now to get themselves out of the situation and unwind some of the decisions that have put them here? Okay, here's the thing. This is what I think. Uh, I think what you guys are saying is correct. Like, Josh Richardson is the best piece. He is the best piece. But if I'm the Sixers, that's not the piece I'm trying to move on from. Now, if you can get a team like Sacramento and they know you know they need a big and you can get rid of the 21st pick and you can get, um, what's his name, uh, what's the disgruntled shooter from? Uh, Buddy Hill. uh, Yeah, Buddy Hill. Then go after that. Like, you know, the thing is Josh Richardson isn't the problem as far as his salary. And I understand that. Now, the thing is they're still going to be over the cap. 
Now you can make a trade and you're going to, all you're going to do is you're going to get like $11 million player back in return, or you can get two guys to accumulate to 11 to basically that's not a lot anymore in the NBA. So what I'm saying is if you can get rid of somebody, get rid of Al Horford's contract, then that's benefiting you down the road. Even when Josh Richardson comes off the books next year, they're still going to be in luxury top, um, um, luxury um, cap. Like I'm, I'm not going to say H E L L, but that's what they're going to be in, you know. So Josh Richardson moving him doesn't benefit the Sixers, like people, but you know, like like people are thinking. All right. You know, Keith, I, I don't know if you just made Jason cry, or if he's just looking up to the heavens for some other reason. But we went through the whole process, <laughs> and we're in worse shape than when we started. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, but that's the main problem. He's not the problem. You know, he was just someone that they got in exchange for Jimmy Butler. No, you're right. He's not the problem. But but you have to find a solution. And sometimes the guy who's not the problem has to be included in whatever the solution is. So, uh, look, I like Josh Richardson. I think that he was put in a bad spot last year. I think that he was given a role that wasn't the kind of role that he's built to succeed for. But at some point, what his role was last year. Yeah, but the, but, but that's his, but that's the part of the problem is these guys didn't right. know their roles last year, and the roles they were put in were the wrong roles. If you put Josh Richardson even in the right role this year, you still have a problem that there's nobody to shoot the ball from the outside. But here's the thing: Josh Richardson is trying to get paid, right? right. So if you if you draft Josh, I mean if you trade for Josh Richardson you have to be committed to giving him a lot of money next year. That's the thing, because you're going to trade for Josh Richardson, and there's a possibility that you're going to lose him. So a lot of teams, as good as he is, and we say that, a lot of teams aren't thinking the same way that we are, because you're not trying to do that and lose a player. The player that a team will say is great would be a Matisse Seibel, because he's still on his rookie deal and he's not making a lot of money. That's the guy. Like Josh Richardson, you can trade for him, and then you'll lose him. Now, if this team is cap strapped or something in that $11 million, whatever it is coming off the books is going to help, it's cool. But, like, when we think of trades, we got to think of what the other team is thinking. Now, the thing is, if you got a team and you think you can make a championship run in the next couple of years, and you look at Al Horford or someone like that, and you're willing to do it, then at least you have them for a couple of years. Now, again, some people may not think that with that with that contract, but what I'm saying is, you got to be careful if you give up someone something for someone and then they leave because they want to go to the highest bidder, and that's what's going to happen with Josh. I mean, Josh is going to want to get paid. He's already said that, and whoever trades for him they have to make sure that they're willing to pay him. You know. Yeah. Well, look, if you want to get all the insight on the Sixers and the NBA, the place to go is Keith's column in the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, Keith, where else can we find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers. And then you can also uh, listen to my podcast, Locked On Podcast. We we have to get my man Jason on there. I know we keep saying hey. that. We got we to gotta let it make it happen soon. Yeah. Look, I recommend people people subscribe. It's it's a must listen. Uh, they can subscribe to us. They can subscribe to Keith. It's it's definitely worth a listen. Uh, and it's and not just weekly. It's when news happens. So I, I get surprised by a little gem that Keith puts out, where I learn. Yeah, now, now, Keith, before we let you sign off, though, here's your shot to take a shot at the Cowboys. You got the floor. Uh huh. <laughs> I really, I don't really, look, man, I'm a Giants fan. I can't take a shot at anyone. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> there, there's always a chance to take a shot, but we'll think of some things. If you think of yeah, something, they, text me and I'll, I'll read I mean, your text on air. They Jeez, call him Danny Dimes, but all I know is who's getting tackled by the turf. <laughs> <laughs> Keith will follow all the latest news that you're breaking at Pompeii at Sixers. Always appreciate a little time. Take care of yourself, man. And I'll definitely come on your right, show thank soon. You. Thanks, brother. Bye-bye. Thank you.